Hi, I'm Jordan Lapasa Hosa, Senior Staff Writer at Telecoms.com. Welcome to this webinar entitled Sound Matters, Why Good Enough Isn't When It Comes to Audio. I'm joined today by Ted Laverty, Director of Business Development at Sound Technology Provider, DTS. He'll be explaining how a better audio experience can enhance consumers' enjoyment of video content. At the end of Ted's presentation, he'll answer any questions you may have, which you can submit at any point during this webinar. So with that, I'll pass you over to Ted. Thank you, Dewinda. My name is Ted Laverty, and I'm the Senior Director of Business Development at DTS. My primary focus is on broadcast media networks and their associated standards. The standards that associate content delivery and build out of ecosystems that um, operators and content distributors can use you know, to, really to make sure that the technology is in place across the entire networks to deliver content to whatever consumer platform it's being consumed on, to really make sure that on a Friday night if you sit down to watch a movie with DTS content in it, you're getting the best experience possible. Without sound, there is no understanding, no emotion or truth. Images are simply that. At DTS, we believe that sound changes the way we see. It tells the story. It gives life. All you have to do is listen. I hope the video set the context of what we at DTS believe. The picture has been prevalent over this past few years, and with 3D, high definition, and now up and coming 4K, where else can video go? I think that the important message is that we believe that there is room for improvements in the audio quality for the end consumer, and these improvements matter. Today's HD experience for consumers is principally being delivered on Blu-ray disc. Blu-ray disc allows exceptionally high quality audio and video with up to 7.1 channels of lossless audio to be delivered into people's front rooms. At this moment, DTS is on over 86% of the global BD titles and is used as the principal audio track. The industry trend at present is for smaller devices for people to get their content played back on. Mobile and portable devices typically are very popular with consumers, but that can mean that the audio experience that people are getting can be compromised. On the other hand, televisions themselves are getting larger, but as sometimes the um, audio experience that you get from a TV is not what it might be. TVs are almost becoming more like extremely high definition displays. However, it is worth noting that in terms of the market environment, there is a greater number of people today actually buying audio components because if you have got a large, thin, flat television with a superb picture, People expect a better audio experience and are actually buying external components to improve the audio experience they're getting on their content in their living rooms. DTS recently undertook a survey to try and get a, a greater understanding of the voice of the consumer. We surveyed 2,200 adults in the UK in February 2012 and really asked them questions about how they accessed audio the types of devices they used, and the value they placed on their audio experiences. We also blind tested a 128 kilobits per second stereo DTS file against a regular MP3 file and asked them to pick a preference. The survey showed that a third of people are consuming audio principally of MP3 or iPod devices, followed then by laptop and mobile phones. 79% of respondents said that they felt that sound had the power to alter their emotions. And three out of four of the respondents preferred the DTS track to the regular MP3. I think one of the key things to come out though was that over a third of the people, 36%, said that they're actually willing to pay money to get a better sound experience with their content on their devices, uh, over and above that what they're getting today. So if we look then at the home environment where people are not using portable or mobile devices, you know, we're seeing an increase in the amount of people buying audio separates. 
There was a Pax Associate report out that connected consumer in Europe that showed that in terms of broadband connected households, in France over 25% of households had an either a home theatre system or a home theatre in a box. In UK, it was over 23%. Spain, it was over 42%. Italy, 30%. Germany, 42.4%. Uh, so overall, in France, UK, Spain, Italy, and Germany, 32.9% of households actually had external audio components to make sure that when they're you know, on the Friday night watching their movie, they're getting the best experience they can from their audio as well as their video. So the consumer is spending money on improving their audio experience in the home. Surround sound is also seen as a very important element. It is very much a mass consumer movement at this point in time. These external audio components have got uh, multi-channel audio capabilities, and this is valued by the uh, people that are going out and buying them and consuming their content on them. The one interesting challenge, though, is if you look at AVRs and home theater systems, they typically have got a life cycle of plus seven years. So when people buy these uh, components, they're going to be remain used for many, many years, in some cases up to a decade. And as such, it's very important that uh, technology solutions are able to address not only the newest HDMI enabled AVRs, but also the legacy systems that may not have such advanced connections. A Blu-ray disc is the principal mechanism by which consumers can access high quality video and audio content today. The new format of ultraviolet is showing itself to be one of the most important uh, recent developments. The ultraviolet format is a mechanism to allow content to be delivered uh, with its own unique uh, digital rights. And it's a move from physical media to allow the content creators to actually own and allow the, the digital rights keys to be um, given to the, uh, to the consumer so they can access their content not only in the living room environments with home theater systems, but also on uh, portable and mobile devices. And this really gives broadcasters, operators, and people you know, running networks the ability to deliver this content to subscribers and consumers. The ultraviolet ecosystem gives the high definition quality promise, but gives uh, a lot of flexibility in the platform playback. And we're seeing at present, you know, Blu-ray discs are actually being sold with the ultraviolet um, copyrights alongside it. And this has been rapidly adopted in the US. And I think it gives an indication of you know, new non-optical connected mechanisms that allow the high quality content that people have come to expect from their Blu-ray disc experiences uh, to be delivered to them. If we look at the issues, however, faced by IPTV operators, uh, there's a different set of constraints compared to those that are seeking to deliver content over um, optical media or ultraviolet mechanisms. At present, the drivers for IPTV are still very much in that make it work, deliver a good quality service, over a potentially very diverse set of network conditions uh, to your customers and give a, a general quality of service that will meet their requirements. There is a bedrock of standards and recommendations in play today, such as DVB, OIPF, DLNA, Etsy, ATSC, IEC, MPEGs 2 and 4, ATIS, and HBB TV, which are building out the standards environments to uh, create the ecosystems to deliver over networks present and future. And you know, DTS uh, is quite active within these groups because we see that the industry trend is going to change from the make it work to make it better. People understand what it's like to get uh, you know, your favorite movie with very rich uh, video, very you know, immersive experiences. And people will be looking at this from networks. It's a, it's a natural evolution. So now it's in the process of becoming more stable and meeting the, the quality service expectations, people will be expecting much more immersive, much more rich, more emotionally compelling experiences from their content. And again, it's important that whatever technologies are developed will be able to link into all the different uh, platforms in which content is consumed, not only from the portable players, but also into the large 3D TV display, high definition uh, environments with the associated home theater systems and audio separates to give the maximum content value. For this next section, I'd like to give a brief overview of the DTS technologies which are being deployed today within the optical media markets, but increasingly within network connected environments as well. The technology format being deployed today within Blu-ray Disc is called DTS HD. 
it has also been standardized and is present in many other network connected ecosystems as well. If we look at the graph on the slide, this shows along the vertical axis the number of audio channels available going from stereo all the way up to 11.1 .1 discrete channels. And along the horizontal axis, the actual bit rate required to transmit the content in the respective multi-channel audio format. The capabilities of the system go all the way up to lossless, whereby there is no actual difference in the audio signals being delivered to the home as there is in the, you know, the content studio where it is being mixed. It is exactly the same ones and zeros. But the format does, however, scale down, allowing you to get discrete 5.1 coding at 192 kilobits per second, or stereo at 64 kilobits per second. We also have a technology called DTS Neural, which allows 5.1 signals to be down mixed into stereo and put across existing legacy networks, such as MPEG-1 layer 2 systems, that then allow an intelligent receiver device to recreate the 5.1 signal and put it effortlessly into either the new HDMI-enabled home theater systems or the older SPDIF ones. The footprint on the consumer device for DTS HD allows all of the different formats of DTS that you know, can be coming from the content environment to be processed appropriately. If you look at this diagram, it basically shows that you can have content coming from a variety of sources, be it from disks or digital media player content or digital files or streaming. And from the consumer point of view, they will be guaranteed if a stereo out on that device and then a digital bit stream which can be plugged directly into their home theater system to give the full multi-channel reproduction. So it means that it's a, an extremely straightforward consumer experience, and they do not have to become experts in sub-menus and selecting different audio formats. As principally, the bulk of the decisions and the heavy lifting for the content processing is done on the silicon platform in a standards uh, environment. And similarly, we can encode a 1.5 megabits per second DTS core bit stream that will be a fully compatible with older home theater systems. So again, whatever the capability of your home theater system is, the DTS technology can be reproduced to its maximum effect. Over our history since our foundation in uh, 1993, you know, DTS has worked extensively with a broad number of the key players in the global content community. We're used extensively within Blu-ray Disc at this present moment. Prior to this, we had the best quality audio format within DVB. And now, as people are looking at ways to meet consumer demands for flexibility over network-delivered content, I, I, again, the technologies that we have developed are being widely embraced within the content community. In terms of the build-out of our ecosystem support, today we have actually got lots of partners, uh, users, and licensees all across the chain, from the professional encoding platform uh, principles through the digital distribution network operators, and also then into the embedded consumer electronics platforms. The plan is to make sure that we have got tools available and consumer device interfaces to allow the DTS content to flow effortlessly across networks to meet consumers' demands. You know, we have been working with France Telecom since January 2010 that have been using one of our formats on their VOD services. And we're working with others that are you know, seeking to bring higher quality audio experiences to their uh, consumers, but most importantly, not disrupting their current workflows. And finally, with our almost 1,000 licensees worldwide, some of which are shown in this slide, we have got broad supports across all the key device platforms from home theaters to set-top boxes to silicon to television to mobile to sound bars. So I, again, DTS has sort of created this system that ultimately is designed to deliver better quality audio experiences than people may be getting today of non-optical delivery mechanisms. So the key takeaways from this webinar that I hope you get are that we can show that consumers are seeking better audio experiences uh, than they're currently used to. At present, people are getting great experiences uh, within the home from Blu-ray Disc, but fundamentally, people want more multi-channel audio content, and they want it to be of higher quality, and they want to play it out across a variety of devices. There is a value to that to consumers, and already we're seeing it today in the uh, market for audio-connected components in uh, front living rooms. The DTS technology suite of DTS HD 
is deployed at present in the market, and it gives people that operate networks a variety of mechanisms at a variety of different data rate capabilities to deliver high-quality audio content to their consumers. And again, the technology can be scaled to whatever network conditions best apply to their particular business. You know, at present, we are seeing IPTV operators seeing DTS as well as a very important differentiator to message to their subscribers that they care about sound and they believe sound matters, and they're deploying DTS technologies to enhance the experience of people today. And finally, DTS technologies are represented well within the standards, are being used today to deliver some of the highest quality experiences, and our technology is flexible enough to be scaled to a variety of different environments, again, principally focused on giving the maximum quality audio experience to the consumer. Thank you all for listening. I will be online for a short while to answer any questions.